Welcome everyone to this episode of Data Dialogues. I'm Julian Redmond from Ignition, which is the new name for Service Insights. So hopefully you've seen that. Um, if you haven't, go to the new website uh, and, uh, and take a look, at the new branding and the new names. Uh, today I have with me Mark Vidinsky from Clean Data. G'day Mark, how are you going? Hi. So um, this conversation came about because I actually watched Mark's presentation from last year's Worldwide Data Vault conference and thought, what a great message um, for our audience to hear about how we communicate the value of Data Vault to business audiences and maybe where we're making a few missteps at the moment. So, um, so Mark, uh, you know, thanks for doing that presentation and thanks for taking some time to talk us through this. Uh, I think it'll be a, a good conversation. Well, uh, great, Julian. I hope so. Uh, what I can tell you is reflecting back, this was last May in Vermont, I did that talk. Um, it was uh, it was certainly off the uh, off the track of uh, the typical set of remarks that went down that week. Yeah. Uh, so much so much uh, detail, really good detail about what makes data vaults go, uh, the nuance of uh, you know how to how to go ten degrees left or ten degrees right to make your data vault better. Uh, some customer stories. So you know it's a great conference in that sense. But I was a little off the script, right? Because uh, I, as a business person, tend to think uh, entirely about outcomes as opposed to the, you know, the sort of sausage machine that's behind the, you know, that's yeah. that's, that, that's behind the the success. Yeah. And uh, and you know, I think I think the message that I tried to bring to the table last year um, that we'll have an opportunity to reflect on here today is is the, the sort of disconnect between the data vault enthusiasts, let's call it that, yeah. and, and those that probably get the most value from the data vault done well, and those are in fact, in fact the business people. Yeah. So, so how, how, I mean, one, we gotta, we gotta kind of recognize that. We gotta, we gotta kind of take that on the chin and say, okay, we're awfully good at, at talking our own stuff here. Yeah. And, uh, but the, the opportunity, the, the, I mean, the real opportunity is to take this conversation to another level in business terms with business people. And, you know, if you think about Data Vault as a, uh, you know, as a good idea, let's kind of start there. Yeah. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody that knows what they're doing with Data Vault argues with that, right? Would you argue with that? No, not at all. I mean, I think the best Data Vault for me is one that business doesn't even know about. Like it just takes care of the data. And they're, they're dealing with the analytics. Uh, well, I was actually talking to a customer just yesterday uh, and, and uh, you know, the, they'd been asked by their manager, you know, is this Data Vault thing still, was that right, the right decision for us? And the answer back was Data Vault's the only thing that's working well right now. Everything else needs improvement, but, but it's an ecosystem of, of, you know, technologies and processes and everything. And so, it's not a solution in itself unless you actually are giving the outcomes to the business. And I think that was the yeah. crux of your conversation. I think I think that's what it's you know it's really uh, you know hopefully interesting to this audience to well you to go you're, through. You're, you're speaking my language, Julie, and you're resonating with with many of the things I'm I'm passionate about. Uh, it's it's not uncommon. Let's let's say it this way: it's not uncommon for data vault enthusiasts to talk about um, why data vault is important. Uh, what I would consider from the inside out. Uh, yeah. So a little bit about how the sausage is made. So we talk about separation of concerns. We talk about many to many. Uh, we talk about, uh, you know, this oncology, ontology that we put together and, uh, you know, the idea that source data can change and, you know, bring, it up, bring out another piece of source data. We're, we're yeah. good with it, right? Everything's yeah. additive as opposed to change. So it's it's not minutia. That would be a little too harsh, but they're, but they're they're inside out concepts, right? And yeah. you know, I I I started the talk last year by just reflecting on history and say, okay, when you when you're when you have an idea, whether it's yeah. inside out or otherwise, what's a, what makes a good idea stick, right? And yeah. there there were themes that uh, I was able to able to find. Uh, so, for example, uh, ideas that we would consider today to be to be really off, like how did that idea ever stick? But yeah. it, it, it did stick because of the paradigm of the day, right? So uh, there was something called daylight motion pictures, for example, where you would, you would go to the movies and uh, the orchestra would be in front and the lights would be on. Well, why did they do that? Anybody, anybody that's trying to produce an immersive experience would tell you 
uh, that's not the greatest idea to have lights on. Uh, yeah. But but they did because the patriarchal society that we had in you know 1905. Uh, said, "Ooh, this is pretty risky. Send the women and children into a dark space. You know, we can't have that." So, yeah. um, believe it or not, that idea was around for you know probably the better part of twenty years before we came to our senses. Um, uh, just, just, just to frame one idea that looks dumb that actually sticks around for twenty years. Now, I don't, I don't think Data Vault is that. I don't think Data Vault is a dumb idea that's going to stick around for twenty years, but. It's not necessarily how good the idea is from the inside out, right? Yeah, uh, that, that absolutely. Makes something, that makes something stick. So flip it around. You think about today things that we take for granted, like the bicycle and the and the automobile, are just part of our society, right? Well, yeah. it didn't it didn't start that way, right? There was a lot of dissing that you know these things are never going to make it. They're not practical. They're too expensive, um, and. And you had to kind of fight. You had to kind of fight through that, uh, you know, that that negative energy, to to finally make something stick. So what I'm trying to say, Julian, is what's the difference between a daylight motion picture, which we would consider to be stupid, and, yeah. uh, and an automobile, which we would consider to be, you know, like, all right, let's go. It's 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 all but ubiquitous now everywhere in the world. Yeah. At the time, both of those ideas looked very much the same, right? They were just they were just ideas that uh, culturally we were kind of trying on. Absolutely. And I've got I've got a, a bunch of your slides. So this was the one that really like one of the ones that that really struck me. You know, you in your talk, you talked about, um, you know, this idea of hamburgers or cheeseburgers and, and you know, and uh, and and this was McDonald's, wasn't it? Um, well, it, McDonald's changed everything. The point yeah. the point is the idea of the hamburger was around for 30 years before McDonald's showed up. Yeah. And there was an argument about, uh, you know, are people really going to eat with their hands? Why would you want to put vegetables with the meat together? Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe we should be doing turkey burgers and pork burgers and nut burgers all instead. So it's it was it was an argument kind of sort of like, you know, data vault. Should we do it this way or that way? Uh, nobody yeah, thinks twice that. today yeah. about a, a cheeseburger, right? It's yeah. it, and, and and it was the McDonald's uh, thing that you know that basically changed it. That was in the that was in the fifties. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and so you know, such a great idea that seems obvious now, but it had a lot of a lot of um, I guess you called them headwinds. And I know that uh, I had this one everyone would relate to as well. You know the the. Um, Sony Betamax, you know, um, I think actually my family had a VHS player and a beta player because, you know, my dad was a bit of a, a, a bit of a video file at the time, you know, um, and, and worked at a university that did, did some uh, video production, but clearly VHS won, even though it wasn't the, uh, necessarily the better idea. Well, and this, I mean, talk about a parallel to data vault, right? So we, we look at this, uh, Sony as, you know, it's a better mousetrap. What's the problem, right? The, the quality mm. of the picture was better. You know, the, it was a, it was really a, a fabulous technology. The nuance was it was a one hour uh, piece of tape. So, you know, uh, you know, one hour shows around the world, they come in kind of 30 minutes, 60 minutes, that kind of works, but it doesn't work so well for sports. So if you're trying to tape, uh, you're trying to tape an American football game or something like that, that goes on for three, three and a half hours. Uh, yeah. It's basically a non-starter. So VHS said, you know, we don't really care that they have a better mousetrap. We're going to come out with something that's, uh, that's four hours long and, it didn't take, gosh, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, uh, Julian, but it was it was less than 10 years. Sony yeah. went from 100 percent market share to like six percent. I mean, it was a massive change. So, Absolutely. you know, to, to be sitting in the back room saying, well, you know, we've got we've got a better mousetrap. Right. The, the, the data vault in and of itself. It's obvious to everybody. Look how much better this thing is. Eh, there's a lot more to it when it comes to actually a market take up here. And this there couldn't be a better example than this one. Well, I think I think that's absolutely right. It's it, yeah. Even though it might be a technically better solution, you still need to focus on what do the actual customers want. And our customers don't necessarily care. Um, well, obviously the architects and the and the data engineers care about what they're doing, but the business users they just want their analytics. They want it. They want it faster. They want it at the business speed. They want it to be correct. You know, so we know what the answers are from a back. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, well, we have this thing and we have that thing. We can, you know, we can uh, deal with change and, you know, and we can load data out of sequence and all of these things, which are which are technical marvels. 
but your business users, all they're hearing, as I think um, one of your slides was like blah, 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 or maybe bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. You know, it's there's there's uh, it, it's got to be relatable to to um, what their actual outcome will be, you know. And, and so, so do you do you happen to have the slide that I had about the Hadoop? Yeah, I do. I will bring up. I'll bring that up now. So and I, we talked I, about. And I, do this. I mean, this this poor Mike guy is a Forrester analyst. I'm um, just hitting him right between the eyes here. So sorry, Mike. Um, I'm, I'm 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 being a bit rude, but you know, this is your quote, Mike. Uh, he basically said, uh, you know, 100% market share for Hadoop, and yeah. you know, you, you you look at that and go, okay, well, how could he have said that, right? Hadoop now is in the rearview mirror uh, as you know, is basically uh, irrelevance too strong, but it's 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 not relevant uh, to a large degree, right? And, you know, you really think about Hadoop uh, 10 years ago, it had all kinds of technical inside out promises, right? It was a little yeah. bit like the data vault talking about uh, separation of the, uh, of, uh, of uh, duties and uh, yeah. many to many and all, all this stuff, right? So it never really uh, hooked itself to yes. um, you know, to 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 a need, and I think that's the opportunity for uh, you know for for us collectively in the you know uh, in the data vault enthusiast market, right? Now compare and contrast that to something like Tableau, right? So Tableau comes along. Admittedly, this is a vendor, not a you know not a, a technology, but you know this is these guys started Tableau back in the day when Cognos and MicroStrategy were market dominant and. Yeah. You know, was 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 the was the experience that we had as users uh, something that we would appreciate today? No, it was more like that pong game. You know, when you think about the history of video games, right? It was arcade. Yeah. And uh, you know, Tableau basically said, "Let's let's grab the guy that worked at Pixar, uh, did did the graphics for uh, literally the Toy Story uh, movie." Mm -hmm. And, and bring that kind of thinking uh, to the table. And they did, right? They revolutionized the whole thing. And yeah. they, they, so that was the technical idea. The business idea was they created a, like a credit card buying scheme. So you didn't have to go through the purchasing department for the corporate standard to go yeah. kick out MicroStrategy. That wasn't the idea. You wanted to just have people getting out their credit cards. So 200 bucks here and 300 bucks there. Uh, the literal strategy was called land and expand. And, you know, expand they did because they turned the, the graphic, uh, you know, Pixar kind of mentality uh, and changed the, changed the user experience, overlapped with the business change and, you know, off to, off to the races. A little bit like Snowflake, right? Snowflake yeah, came well, out okay. nice too, but it, but it's the consumption model that they created in the business. So the, the, the lessons here, Julian, I think are good, good ideas aren't good enough. Uh, the good yeah. idea may or may not turn out to be a good idea, right? If you look at the, you know, if you look at the, uh, the movie theater with the lights on, but even yeah. if it is a good idea, even if it is a, even if it is a Sony Betamax, that's not necessarily good enough, right? So uh, I, I, I tried to model, for lack of a better term, I tried to just build a little three-dimensional, uh, you know, sort of thinking model that yeah. says, what is it about these ideas that stuck compared to the ones that didn't, right? So one, it's got to work. Uh, yeah. Two, it's got to matter. And three, it's got to sell. It's got to have all three of those components. I completely agree. I mean, it's, if you think about what, what Tableau did and now what Snowflake have done, they've created a completely different, uh, acquisition model or business model uh, so so they do have very good technology maybe better technology in, uh, you know in some cases as well um, but it's it's a different way for the business to actually access it and consume it and then giving better results you know like putting it in the hands of users and those sorts of things and I think there's I think as you pointed out really well there's there's some really good lessons for us to you know where, where does that leave us with data vault you know so that I think that Framing up that there's been lots of good ideas that have maybe gone by the wayside, and there's been some other ideas that maybe weren't as good but packaged really well and focused on the actual outcome rather than the than you know the technical uh, uh, components of it. And that's what made them successful, and I think you know everyone in this audience knows the value of data vault as a as a process that it actually does work as you know as that customer said to me yesterday it's the bit that is working we know that technically it works but are we packaging up around it you know the 
the things that the business wants, like consistent delivery and, you know, and, and, uh, and rapid delivery and, you know, and a focus on the end outcome and, you know, and do they want analytics on their pipeline or on their, you know, on their drive chain or on their, you know, on their supply chain or on their employees? So that's what they want. They want the analytics on, you know, on, on that stuff. They don't really care about have we got every system in the warehouse yet. And, uh, yeah. but I think often a lot of the technical people, you know, have had this conversation many times. Yeah. Oh yeah. Phase one, we're just going to load all our sources into the vault. And it's like, well, that's not going to, it's not necessarily going to get you any results you can put in front of the business. So let's not do it that way. And I think like, you know, to Dan's credit and DVA's credit, there is in the guidelines, the statements don't do it that way do things in incremental pieces and deliver value to the business but i think it gets overwhelmed by all the all the modeling components and technical components and architectures and all that sort of stuff so so yeah, i'd love I, you to talk I, us through this next bit if, yeah, if you can well i think i think what you're saying uh, is is spot on the the prescription for success is kind of right in front of us but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean we take it up right we tend to go to our comfort zone as technical people and uh you know just j j just sort of rely on uh you know many of the concepts that kind of got us to where we are in our careers and mm. some of this some of this get get out of our chair and go talk to the business is uh you know it can be challenging for for a lot of folks right but i i think if you consider the realities of of where we are today with with data vault uh there's there's a little bit of a uncomfortable sort of set of truths if you will what i call traps uh, that, that yeah. seduce us right that this idea that it's cool and clubby to be part of data vault um, you know, it's, it feels good to go to training and get yourself certified and all that, right? You see that on LinkedIn, people post their certificates and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, yes, yeah, so I'm not taking away from the, you know, from the sense of accomplishment when you do that. But on the other hand, uh, we make it a little too tough for folks to get into the club, right? So how, how, how do we, how do we make the club easier to get into? And I think it's I think it's a matter of having the right discussion at the right level with the right people, right? So our value uh, should be obvious. Uh, a lot of times it's not, right? But there, there's yeah. a translation that has to happen. Uh, we think we're over here. There's fire coming out of our fingers. You know, we're cranking along at 100 miles an hour at the keyboard. Uh, the business is like I don't know what they're doing over there, but they're not they're not adding you know the sort of value uh, to me that I need today. And it's not ambiguous. It's not hard, right? These people have real jobs with real use cases of data. And if the data is not there in a timely way, in a quality way, they've got to go find it some other way, right? They're not going to sit around and wait for you just because you think you're, you know, look at all these raw vault yeah. tables I'm building, you know, so what? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, in my role, and, and I think very much in your role as well, in our in our day jobs, we're the ones that are trying to communicate to the business users. And and while I feel like, you know, my job is to translate the technical um, aspects of Vault or other parts of information management and analytics and stuff to a to a non-technical audience, to a business user, it's way out of their comfort zone. You know, if, if you're a supply chain manager or, you know, or, or HR manager or marketing manager or whatever it is, you haven't spent... 20 years hanging out with data guys like like we have and you don't know the acronyms you don't know you know like it is really really unstable ground to get involved in and so there's we've got to recognize that uncertainty and i think that to me that's part of the clubby bit is we have a language and and we need to make sure that we don't leave people behind and we have that conversation and and so I, yeah when i'm hanging out with my team i'm the least technical guy in the room but when I'm hanging out with you know business users trying to help them understand what they actually need to do for their business to help get this stuff sorted, I'm the most technical guy in that that conversation. Mm -hmm. And then I think you know as a as a group we could all recognise shifting gear and 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 making it more accessible. You know, really talking about impacts rather than you know rather than using our three letter acronyms. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a corollary to that, too. Uh, you know, we think about agile development, continuous delivery, that kind of stuff. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, by definition, there's a there's an iterate model here. Right. So let's let's see something iterate. Let's see it again. Iterate. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, you know, there, 
if, if, if you're the technical person that's trying to get out of their chair and go talk to the business, right. And you're, you're worried about, uh, you know, precision and some of these concepts, um, and you're not, you're not talking in not just in their language, but showing them something that we can iterate on. Right. Yeah. So this, uh, I call it the clipboard effect. Uh, and I, there's a slide somewhere later, you don't have to scramble yeah. to find it. It's, it's, the idea is pretty simple, right? So the business person, or excuse me, the technical person says, okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be all that today. I'm going to get out of my chair. I'm going to go talk to the business. I'm going to bring a sharp pencil and a, and a clean sheet of paper. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to say, right, what do you need? Yeah. You know, what are you doing? You're following into a waterfall trap. The, the business person may or may not be able to tell you what they need. What has yeah. to happen here, Julian, is we got to we got to build something. So the fact that and when I say build something, build on the terms that, uh, you know, that the, that the customer is in. So this picture you're showing now is a very, very succinct way to, I think, reflect on I love it. what yeah. job what job are we in? So are we are we plumbers and we're concerned about code and uh, earthquake tolerance and making sure the pipes don't leak? <coughs> all very important stuff. But from those that are upstairs in the kitchen, they take all that for granted, right? So yeah. uh, my data, my way. Uh, do we need to come a step further? Right now, again, if you look at this at this sort of picture and just kind of play with the metaphor a little bit, I'm not sure the data vault guys have to pick out the flowers and, the, and go buy the silverware, but should we be installing the dishwasher? Should we be installing the cabinets? Probably, because yeah. if we're if we're not doing it, you're leaving it to the business to do that, to just say, here's the plumbing studs, have fun. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're putting a lot of trust that the business will be able to do it, one. Number two, if they do do it, uh, are they going to do it to the standards that, uh, you know, that, that we think are appropriate? I mean, how many times do you hear a, a, a technical data guy or even just a, a data vault person in general? You won't believe what they're doing over there in the business, right? They're building dodgy stuff. It's uh, it doesn't hold the test of governance, and yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. But you know, look at this kitchen. They, that's that's the world they live in, right? They got to get that done. Yeah, no, I I completely agree, and I think it, it to me too. It's also about the conversation. We you know we don't want to have a com like we need to say we can take care of the plumbing. We want to talk to them about what the kitchen's going to look like and how it's going to function for them when they're making a meal, not not you know like placement of of you know this next to that and you know and the way we're going to connect things and how you know how stuff's going to flow through. That's important at the architect level and at the data engineering level. You know we absolutely have to do that the right way, and we need to make people comfortable that that the way we do that is going to deliver consistent data upstream. But they don't. That's that's almost the end of that conversation. Is if it's going to come consistent, it's going to come clean, and you know it's going to be there when I need it. And now let's talk about how you're going to use it. I think that's um that's far more important. And you have a couple of these next slides. You know, it talks about some of the words we use, and I think this is on the same theme. You know, um, you know whether we're using language that the business can understand, or whether we're using language that you know that. Uh, which is in reality, you know, this bit hit home because I find myself talking about hash keys and satellites and business vaults and all those things probably more often than I should, especially when I'm talking to business users. Yeah, but if you go if you go back a slide, I'm actually I'm actually making a layered message here, which is we think when it's time to talk about the business, we talk about scalability, flexibility, you know, the, the abilities, mm -hmm. right? And yep. again, I'm going to challenge all of us to reflect on some of this language, right? Uh, is it is it a little too uh, theoretical? Is it a little too motherhood, apple pie kind of stuff, right? Yep. Um, where 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 does the rubber meet the road? It's somewhere between these high level theoretical words and the detail on the next slide. I, yep. I what what I fear is there's a language in between that's largely missing, and it's the language it's the language of the business person in their in, in their language, right? So if you're talking to a marketing person, they're talking about lead conversion and this sort of stuff. That's the that's the language we have to get to. And you say, well, I'm a I'm a data jock. How am I supposed to know that? Uh, it's not as hard as you think, right? A lot of this <laughs> is just being empathetic, get having having their pain in your heart. Classic empathy concept. Uh, yeah. Go go figure out the, the person that's trying to get the data for lead conversion improvement. What is it that they're trying to do and why? And you go, okay, let me bring a prototype to the table. It's based on data vault, but it's going to be another, it's going to be an infomart layer. It's going to be a dimensional model that you'll be able to understand. I'm not going to just bring 
you know, satellites to the table and yeah. you start having a conversation, you're, you're meeting them, you're meeting them halfway, Julie. And I think that's the, I think that's the theme that's hard for us to get our head around. Um, yeah. And, I, agree. You know, and I, love it, I love your next slide about, cause if you don't talk to them in their, their language, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. This, this is what they hear. Sorry, sorry to be crude, but that's what they hear, right? They just no, bullshit. It, I, it, it's, I completely it's agree. Yeah, it, because if you don't understand what someone's telling you, you have no way to tell if it's accurate or truthful at all. You, you know, until you understand it, you have no way to make a value judgment on on the statements. So, I think it is a trap for us uh, as practitioners, and it's not a trap that's exclusive to Data Vault. It's a trap for you know lots of technology, um, and especially in the information management space, whether they're looking at Data Vault or other other approaches or other technologies, but but I think it's a real challenge for us to make sure that we are doing it. And, and you know, there, there are, as you, you know, we get to surely, there are, you know, there are some things we can do to, to clear some of that up for people. So um, this was well, really valuable if you can talk to this one for a sec. I think this is, you know, helpful. Yeah, so this is the, so this is the paying, paying attention thing, right? Um, so, you know, sometimes uh, there's just open conflict, right? You, you feel it. Uh, the, the business people are saying, you data jock guys over there in the other building, you know, you're, you aren't delivering to our needs. And everybody starts getting defensive. You rally around the water cooler. You mm -hmm. go off to your staff meeting. Your boss gets on your side. Yeah, it's those business people. If they could only understand. Julian, I actually had a client once tell me that, uh, and this is, it, it's true. You can't make this up. The problem we're having in this company is we need to send the business people to data vault training. If they would only go to data vault training, meaning like the the yeah. you know the stuff that you do like the how yeah. how to make the sausage stuff right yeah. <laughs> like oh yeah I'm just I'm so sure this this business person in marketing is going to go learn the nuts and bolts of data ball right it's ridiculous so yeah. um, so they go you know they go dark uh, they get evasive uh, and you know in the worst case they start building their own stuff. And, you know, the, the technologies are not that far different, right? You, you think about business people, they're using Tableau and Alteryx. Uh, yeah, but they're also dabbling in DBT, right? They're, they're playing around with building data structures that, you know, they think they're going to need to do their job. So, you know, look, you see this kind of stuff. It's not necessarily somebody kicking your teeth in with, with overt conflict. It's they're elusive. They're building stuff themselves. Yeah, uh, you can you can ignore that and whine at the water cooler um, or you can do something about it. And I think to do something about it is, you know, you got to confront these do it yourself projects. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Why are you doing this do it yourself project? Probably has to do with speed, probably has to do with getting the data just right in a way that you're not delivering just right. But most of the time, Julian, I think it's a misunderstanding. Right. We, we're, we the data jocks just aren't understanding what they need. Oh, that's all you need. I can do that. Right. There's an aha moment that we go through. Uh, having this do it yourself project persist is, you know, is death by a, a thousand cuts, obviously. And, and it comes from lots of different directions. Like we had, an, we had a, a customer who gave us a quite a detailed set of requirements which were developed for them. And when it was presented back to the business, the business said, oh yeah, that's what we needed when we wrote those. We don't do half of that now, you know? And, and you know, there were some lessons in there in that the, the sizing of the scale of the piece of work was, was too large. And, you know, so therefore it took longer than it should to deliver and, uh, and therefore things had moved on. And, you know, and so that comes back to some of your agile processes and making things bite size and, you know, and getting it through that sausage factory and those, those sorts of things. But, but it would have even regardless of that, if we were engaging closer with the business while it was happening, then and prototyping these things, then we wouldn't have built, uh, you know, a bunch of things that necessarily weren't going to be used, which is just yeah. a waste of money and time. Um, not just on building that, but on the fact that you have now not built things that they could have used because you spent time building stuff that they didn't. So, um, yeah. But but that's I guess that's kind of the the you know the doom and gloom of if we get it wrong, you know, if we don't have the right language and we don't talk to the business. But there's there's definitely an upside here as well in that you know as you say here, you know, it actually works. Like we all know it works. Everyone on this audience knows it works. It's just really. What are the things that we we have to do? Well, I think I, I, I think again, this is this 
this little triangle here goes back to what I tried to model out of history, right? Good ideas stick and good ideas take off and markets are developed. Uh, things turn from uh, from random to ubiquity when, you know, it works, it matters and it sells, right? So I think yeah. that it works part when it comes to data vault is let's not lose sight of the fact that we're trying to turn this data into actionable intelligence, right? That, yeah. that key little segue, we're not just building uh, and, and implementing a methodology just because, right? We're not over here stirring our peas around our plate, feeling good about ourselves. Uh, we're, we're actually trying to turn this into action, right? So, uh, you know, let's let's make sure we're conscious of where business rules go. We're going to do that best when we're working with the business. Let's make sure we're using good software. So if you're trying to build a data vault by yourself, you know, without a tool, you know, mm. that's probably just plain dumb. Uh, yeah. Use use certified people or certified uh consultants like you guys, you know, at, at, at all costs, right? So, you know, doing it right, uh, though there's plenty of examples where I think people do it wrong, uh, doing it right is not the, is, is, is probably not the hard part, right? Let's, mm. let's just not, let's not deprioritize the information art layer. That's just as important as the staging layer. Um, you know, let's not get overly obsessed with the models. Um, and when I say that, I mean, let's not get obsessed with the models before we show something to the business. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay, and expect to be wrong, right? So you you yeah. build a certain model about how data from different sources comes together and you show it to the business. Uh, now we're starting the conversation and we're going to discover what's missing, what's wrong, what's redundant, where we have a data quality problem. Oh, I thought that data was there in that system. It turns out it's not. Where are we going to get that data from, right? Those realities that come from, you know, let's just, let's just get started. But if you flip to the next slide, then it's not just a matter of it works. Uh, how, how do we make this? How do we make this stuff matter? And I think this is largely this translation that we're doing, um, you know, for the business. So now here's mm -hmm. a very simple, uh, crude model of, a, of an org chart, right? You got the technical haunts on the left. You got the data consumers on the right. We care about very different things, uh, clearly, mm -hmm. right? So we're we're here for the good of the team. Uh, the data consumers, they're just the, they're the selfish ones, right? Just give me what I need when I need it to do my job yeah. and the collective aggregation of those selfish people well that's you know that that's your data consumers the thread in the middle though this concept of senior management who really is about uh, building the uh, you know the the infrastructure making sure they invest in the appropriate human capital with the appropriate process and all that to grow the company and operate the company um, they're the link in the middle. So these green arrows, Julian, to me are uh, potentially magical here. Rather yeah. than talking about uh, corporate governance to a data consumer, uh, that's a non-starter. Let's talk about those concepts to senior management. Why? Because they care about risk mitigation, right? Yeah. And then you let the senior management talk to the business about growing the business and operating the business. And when it's our turn to talk to the business, we hop over that fence. We speak to them in their, their language on their terms. That's not, to, that's not to say we don't care about uh, corporate governance. I'm just saying have the right conversation with the right people. You don't have a conversation about corporate governance with the marketing uh uh, influencer that's trying to that's trying to figure out their you know their lead conversion. You have that discussion with the CFO, uh, but I think all parties, as long as that classic phrase, you know your audience, right? Um, yeah, there is a conversation to be had about governance and scalability and all that. It's just not with the marketeer, that, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. I mean, I think you know, we could sum up this whole conversation with that simple phrase of have the right conversations with the right people because and, and maybe tack onto that with, with language that they understand so you make yourself clear. But it, it's a simple idea, but it's something that I think as data vault practitioners, whether we're sitting you know, as a practitioner in an organisation trying to convince that business that we want to go data vault or as a service provider or a vendor of technology, now, when we're not being as effective as we could be in actually helping managers uh, and consumers understand this, you know, the value of it, and and I think that leads you know nicely into this kind of last part of the of your presentation. Well, yeah. So, so the the it sells is about relevance and enthusiasm, right? So, mm. can we can we take our enthusiasm away from that red heart we had way in the beginning, which is we're all fired up about the technical detail about uh, data vault, and turn it into enthusiasm about outcomes. And, and, and what difference it's making and the value that it brings. And again, not in hairy, fairy theoretical terms, but in, in tangible terms with the mm. business, with the salespeople, the marketing people, the finance people, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, 
th those that are analyzing and taking action based on data, can we get them the data they need when they want it while we're embracing uh, with, uh, you know, with senior management, the, the, the governance and the stuff that, that actually we're good for. Um, we gotta, we gotta, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, it's about will, uh, Jillian. Uh, it, it's a matter of getting out of our chairs and making a difference. It's just too easy to sit behind the screen and, uh, you know, and just sort of pound the keys at the at the latest thing that we have to do with the latest table we have to build. It's a, yeah. it's a lot harder to go talk to somebody that doesn't speak our language. But I'm telling you, you and you see this in your business. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. This is the ma this is where the magic happens. You, you want to make data vaults uh, stickier in the market. You want to make them something approaching ubiquity. That's the that's the you know that's the metamorphosis we have to go for go through. It's about the outcomes and why does it matter? Absolutely. I mean, and then I think there's lots of answers here. Like, you know, I mean, this is what clean data does, right? You guys actually go and talk to the senior people in businesses to try and actually help them understand why they should care about this thing that their technical people are telling them about. You know, we've we've uh, developed an exec. Uh, overview so it's a one day course rather than a three day certification course so that you know so that execs can come on and get an understanding without getting all the techno babble that that they you know, they're not going to grasp you know they don't have the background in computer science or whatever well else. They, we, I mean that's a great that's a great uh, product service that you mm. offer right we need we need more of that in the in the market right i i, yeah. I think clean data is uh, we're, we're probably unique uh, at the parade of data vault enthusiasts here because at the end of the day, it's, it's just a means to an end. The end we care about is raising revenue, uh, abating customer attrition, uh, finding the appropriate upsell opportunities, uh, you know, yeah. all of that business related stuff. And to a large degree, the customers look at us and go, look, I don't care if it's squirrels in a cage or a data vault, do whatever you want. Uh, just make the business outcome, you know, happen for us. And so the fact that Data Vault is a pretty effective uh, methodology and architecture to to take the approach, particularly for larger thriving organizations where you do have uh, mergers and acquisitions and changing source data, you know, these, these kind of real world things. Um, but I think that's I think that's it. Uh, you know, if you want to do an infomercial for us, it's this it's clean data is about that business value and having that conversation. So the fact that you're doing that too, uh, trying to translate this stuff and mm. something like a one day course, superb, really, really, really well received, I'm sure. Well, and I think that I think it the, you know we need all of it. You know, we don't have enough consultants in in this community of ours that are focused on the business and the business outcomes and on the executive engagement and, you know, and the, the governance and risk management, because we are a group of, you know, of technical boffins trying to solve technical problems. And so I think what you guys do is actually fantastic. The, the executive overview course is, is a tool. I think it's a tool that, you know, that, that you know, that we obviously have produced with DBA's endorsement and help to, to offer as a, as a short course, because, that's definitely a gap we've identified, but but I think that that um, that strategic engagement is something that that more people should try and do, or you know, obviously reach out and partner with you guys as as we have, because I think that's um that's a great way to to uh, uh, lift that conversation. If you're not comfortable with having that conversation, bring in someone who is to help you. Yeah, for sure. And I think yeah. the answer here is is that we we all exist in an ecosystem. We all have different skill sets. We should rely on each other and work with each other to make these things possible rather than, rather than you can't do everything yourself. You know, you know, so you can't do everything. Clean data can't do everything. DVA can't do everything. We, uh, we all need to work together to make this, uh, make this work. And you had some cool slides, I think, at the end of yours of, you know, we, we want Tableau, not Hadoop, you know, and well, yeah. yeah. So if you, yeah. if you go back to history, we'll just pick on the, pick on the losers and celebrate yeah. the winners, right? We want to, exactly. we, we, we we, it, we have everything uh, to, to be a cheeseburger here, right? We, yeah, we, exactly. just, we, we just need to turn the knob, much like yeah. McDonald's did for, for burgers. Right? We just need to turn it. Uh, yeah. so, and, ho and hopefully we can. Look forward to it. Yeah, excellent. Well, look, I really appreciate your time you know, to have this chat. It was you know, obviously a bit of a freeform um, way to talk about it. If people want to go and actually see your presentation, then I uh, noticed that in the latest... Uh, podcast from DVA. Cindy actually gives away some uh, some access codes to get some limited uh, access to 
uh, the the presentations from WWDVC from last year and previous years. So, so you know, if you're watching this and you want to actually go and see Mark's actual talk, then that's the way to go and find it. Go watch uh, Cindy's latest, um, uh, the recap episode of the DVA podcast. Um, and obviously stay tuned on, on DVIC for more of this sort of content. But Mark, thanks so much for coming along today. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks, George.